So now we're going to talk about one of the really, another one of the really important logical structures that is going to be holding a lot of your code together. So we talked about the if statement, the value is conditional, and now what we're going to do is talk about the for loop. Okay, so. Um, so to start, I'm going to just write down a really simple example of a for loop, and we'll go through how it works in some detail. So like before, we're going to be in the editor window, and I'm going to type in a couple of lines of code. I'm going to start with uh, a equals 1 to 3. Right? So we can, uh, we can evaluate that by running it. Right? So now I've ran this entire script, which is this one line. I can check what A is, which is always a good idea. A is 1 through 3, exactly like I specified. Okay? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that I want to do something assuming that A is each of these values in turn. Okay? So I'm going to do something where I'm going to say 4A equals 1 to 3. Right. In here, I'm going to do something just like the structure we have the if statement. There's something inside a script that I'm going to do over and over, and it also needs an end, the end. Okay. So the thing that I'm going to do is that I'm just going to print out what A is. So here we go. We can display A. Okay. That's all I'm going to do. And uh, if I ran the script, here's what happens. Okay. So it came out too fast, but you can see in the command window. I ran the script, which is called intro2, right? And because A is this vector 1, 2, 3, right? What's going to happen is that it's going to go through it, assuming A is each of those values one at a time. So the first time it goes in, A equals 1. The second time it goes in, in the second, in the second part, in the second time it goes in the loop, A equals 2. And this third time it goes in, it says a equals 3. OK? So this is sort of the, the trivial case of a for loop, but we're just going in and counting. right? We're saying a equals 1 through 3, and then I'm just going to count what is a right now. right? But what we can do is do something to that a. right? Let's say we can square it. So let's say that every time we go into a loop where a takes on the values of 1 and then 2 and then 3 in turns, we go into this loop three times. I'm going to print out instead the square of A. OK, let's run that. And let's see what the output is. So the first time it went into the loop, so here's uh, where the script got run, right? The first time I went in, A equals 1. So A squared is 1. The second time I went in, A equals 2. So the square of A is 4. And the third time I went in, A equals 3. So the square of A is now 9. OK, does that make sense? Um, and so armed with this knowledge, I can now do some computations. So, so far, all we've done is go in and do something one at a time. This is sort of relatively independent, right? Every time we go into the for loop, we're just doing something totally different. And all we're doing is doing it three times and counting where we are. But we can do something that, um, that would keep track of the information from the previous loop. So let's say that I want to uh, write some kind of a, a sum function. I want to know the sum of all the numbers between 1 and 3. Okay. So what I'm going to do is name another variable that I'm going to call my sum, and I'm going to put this before the for loop. Right? Remember, everything's very, very linear. All of these lines gets executed one at a time in turn. So on line one, I'm going to initialize and make a variable that's going to have the elements 1, 2, and 3. And on this line, I'm going to initialize another variable. It's going to be called my sum, and it's going to have a value of 0. And it's going to sit there with a value of 0. And then next, I'm going to execute the for loop, right? So in the for loop, what I'm going to do is update the value of my sum. And it's going to equal my sum. The new value of my sum is going to equal whatever the previous value of my sum is plus a. OK? I'm going to save that. And uh, I'm going to execute it. I didn't ask for any kind of output, and so nothing happened by itself. But now I can check on the, the current value of my sum after executing the script, which I just did. And the value is 6. So the question I ask myself is, this is, is this what I expected? I was trying to add up all the numbers between 1 and 3. So 1 plus 2 plus 3 is 6. Now it makes sense. So this is great. Okay? 
So a tool for kind of keeping track of this information, especially when these loops get more convoluted and get more complicated, where we're going to put if statements in there and stuff like that, is that you can always think about it as the variables having some kind of physical in existence inside the memory of the computer. And as we're going through the code in this very linear way, things are being updated one at a time. Okay, So I'm going to show you a way to sort of keep track of what's going on, especially if these for loops start getting more and more confusing. Because this, this case is pretty simple right now, but they get more confusing. And so it's really easy to kind of like lose track of what's going on. And so there's a, there's a kind of a trick for to writing it on a piece of paper. Okay? So what we're going to do is um, basically there's a for loop, right? And so I want to remind myself, what do I have before the for loop starts? Okay? I have my sum. Okay, and it equals one. It equals zero. And so, actually, what I'm going to do is draw a box for my sum, which is this is actually a location in memory, and it's called my sum, and it has a value of zero inside. Okay. So next, what I'm going to do is go through the loop, right? And so the loop, I'm going to change the value of a because that's the variable I'm changing in the for loop. Okay. So I'm going to make a chart here, and I know that a is going to be changing. Okay. And I also know that something, I'm going to write down all the other variables that are relevant inside this loop. And so the variable that's relevant right now is my sum. Okay? And there's nothing else happening in this loop, so I think I've, I'm keeping track of everything I need to right now. So I'm going to go through one at a time, okay? So I'm here in line three, I have my sum being zero. Next, I'm going to go into the for loop, and the first thing that happens is that a gets assigned the value of the first of that vector, which is one, right? So a equals one. Right? I go inside and execute this line here. My sum equals my sum plus a. Okay? So I want to evaluate the thing that's on the right hand side of the equation, right? My sum, I look at my sum and see what I have for my sum right now. It's zero plus a, which is one. Right? So my sum gets updated to be one. It is no longer zero, right? Zero is what happened before I go into the loop. After I'm in the loop, I've updated it, and this is the new value of my sum. This is gone, right? Now I have my sum equals one. So I go back again, and I say, okay, a was just one. The next thing that's going to be is two, because I'm counting up by integers of, of, of one, right? So now a equals two. My sum plus a, right? My sum is one. a equals two. So my sum plus a is one plus two, which is three. Good. All right. Now I'm done for that, with that iteration of the loop. I go back again. And then a now equals, I've, I've done one, I've done two, and the next up is three. Right? So a equals three. And then my sum plus a is three plus three, which is six. And at that point, I actually go back again and I say, has a taken all the values that I told it to take? So it's taking one, two, and three. That means I'm all done. Right? At that point, it comes out of the loop, goes to the end, and then exits the for loop. And at that point, I can then re examine what all of my values are. So this is the end of what happens, right? None of this stuff exists anymore. I don't know what 8 used to be. I don't know what one sum, my sum used to be. I don't know the value of um, the computer no longer has a track record of what my sum had been assigned to be before you enter the loop. All I have is what's down here. This is what's in the memory now. So let's double check that that's what's happened. My understanding is correct, right? So I say, what is A? A is 3, exactly like I traced on the board. And what is my sum? And my sum is 6, exactly like I traced on the board. Okay? So these things no longer exist. This is no, not real anymore. After I've gone through the loop, everything's been updated. And this is what the computer now has in its memory of the values of a and my sum. So that's how you do a very, very simple for loop.